community is so small, everyone knows each other, and you can say, oh, I just met this guy. Um, who are you? And suddenly you realize this industry is incredibly small. And if you know a couple of key people, like for example your teachers, you can meet whoever you want, whenever you want. Uh, don't be insecure. I mean, believe in yourself. I mean, everyone has something to say, and if you have something to say, do it. Be polite, be strategic. But uh, remember, all these people were in your shoes once. They once had to look up to publishers, pitch their games in the same way you guys are, get defeated 100 times until they got that one chance for success. Uh, and most importantly, enjoy yourself. Enjoy the fact that you're meeting new people, new sources of inspiration, new possible collaborations or job offers in the making. Odds are that a random person knows someone who can help you. So don't ignore them. And that brings me to another thing, which is uh, something I've never been able to, never read something about or talk to someone about, but I know for a fact that it exists. The conference dip. At a certain point at each conference, I personally feel overwhelmed. There were so many talks I missed so many people I did not say hi to or were, was not able to set up a meeting with um, that I generally feel sad and disappointed in myself for not having done it. Now, I might be a bit over ambitious with that, but um, we all know the feeling of wanting to have seen that certain keynote and then finding out it wasn't actually taped and we will never be able to watch it again. You will feel lonely too. You will sit on your hotel room wondering what the hell you are doing here, why you still want to make games, and what brought you here in the first place. Because you'll feel miserable and you feel like, why? Why am I doing this? You will miss important talks, parties, stuff, and people, as I already said, and you'll feel miserable about it because you will make yourself responsible and feel guilty that you didn't you know, watch, look at your watch at the right time and sprint over there. You might have a lack of sleep or lack of nutrition. I generally do not eat during conferences. I eat something in the morning because I know I won't be eating in the, at the conference. And then most likely at the end of the evening, I end up at a reception with these little tiny tidbits of food, which they call hors d'oeuvres. And I just take a plate of those. Because I know if I'm gonna drink alcohol before those, I'll be flat on the floor within an hour. Fight that conference dip. And that's why I said just now that you need to have a posse, have people you can call, have people you can talk with. The first GDC I had in 2008, I cried because of how overwhelming the experience was. And I was lucky enough to have, lucky enough to have an old friend to sit down with me, talk with me, and remind me why I was here and what, the potential, what kind of potential I had in this industry. And remember, there's always the second day <coughs> to do the stuff you weren't able to. In case you have a booth, um, that's a different story. Um, if you get, in case you have a booth where you show off your game, there's a certain strategy involved. There's a certain preparation that you need to make. And uh, I haven't read an article about this as good as the guys from Haunted Temple Studios have written. Uh, it's actually in the references in the back. So you don't have to worry about writing this down. They're actually working on a game called uh, Skulls of the Shogun. And they've been uh, a great example for me as an independent game developer as well on how they deal with their promotion stuff and with preparation. Preparation is half of the work. Um, like uh, Brute Viper says here, big things to keep in mind. Register early to get a good location. Keep in mind all the ancillary costs that you have, like rental, shipping, promotional materials. Don't just end up there with your stuff, uh, trying to figure out what and how. Be prepared. All right, quick intermission. Read this book. It was actually one of the first books that I read on uh, networking and on dealing with people. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You have an audio book in case you want to just lie down and listen to it. But it's essential. It's, it's essential to figure out how you can talk to people, how you can get to know them, and how you can get them to like you in less than 30 seconds. 
I was on an exchange program with UCLA in Los Angeles uh, two years ago where I ended up in the middle, in the upper center of the entertainment industry. Uh, entertainment industry. And um, people stood in front of me and they were listening. And if I didn't have anything interesting to say to them or they, if they weren't interested, they would just walk away. And they left me there standing, wondering if it was me, if it was my looks, if it was the way I talked, not understanding that it was simply because they didn't want to waste their time on someone they thought wasn't interesting to them. Because making sure you connect with people is not something we are born with. That's something we have to teach ourselves. And tell me that it's not hard. And I will bow for you. Because I had to teach this myself as well. So one thing I haven't given yet is a collection of examples. Um, <laughs> Really is online. <laughs> um, here are some do's and don'ts that I had to learn the hard way. Um, time your introductions. If you see a group of people talk, don't think you can just walk up to that group and start talking to them. You might just be interrupting a million dollar deal right there and then. You know, center dude is thinking, what the f I was just about to close an important deal here. Oh, go away. Leave me alone. That's a very bad way to enter a conversation. So watch people's body language. Watch the way they are interacting. If they're very close to each other, that means there's very something very important going on. If they're watching their phones and they're taking a step back and they're actually silent a couple of times, that's the perfect moment to introduce an, a deus ex machina. In other words, you to the conversation. Find a legitimate excuse to approach someone. Um, we all suddenly will see people that we admire at conferences um, and get this like inherent need to approach them. Don't. Don't be a fanboy. I know it's hard. I know you really want to talk to this person. Uh, I'm not going to deny it. I've been waiting six conferences to actually talk to Peter Molyneux, who I've had standing right next to me several occasions, walking in front of me, smoking a cigarette, or doing something in my vicinity, being very accessible. But I knew for a fact, why should I? Why? I have nothing to say to this man. Same goes for Tim Schafer. Every single time I went to the GDC, Tim Schafer was there at the, uh, the IGF Awards um, and afterwards you know he would be there with his wife and all these game developers would be raving around him and literally I timed it this year at GDC San Francisco it took him half an hour to exit the awards hall and get out of the building because I stood there waiting for friends who wanted to meet him one half an hour I mean that's fun and all, but I can imagine why that can be quite annoying for people who are so central in this industry. I mean, Miyamoto, my God, he must live a very miserable life if he's not wearing his mustache over the street. Um, so bear that in mind, guys. I mean, if you really want to talk to these people, you will end up talking to them. And I actually found a legitimate reason to talk both to both of these people because I've met people who have worked with them and who have told me what kind of inspiring and extraordinary people these people are and why I should actually approach them and talk to them myself. Once again, don't act like a fanboy. Find a legitimate reason. Um, so, just to return on this, um, yeah, there are douches out there in this industry. There are people that will look up, down on you, wait 20 seconds for you to say something, and if you don't, they will walk away and they will leave you crushed and crumbled and insecure about yourself. I know because I was there several times. Still am, occasionally. Don't take it personal. They don't know who you are yet. They don't know what kind of passion, talent, enthusiasm, and motivation you have. Because they're not able to see it 
in less than a second. Some people simply are jerks. Others are just incredibly busy. It's not personal. But wait, I haven't talked about big game conventions yet. Are they important? Yes, they sure are. Should we go? Of course, why not? You can meet the press there. At E3, a couple of, yeah, last year, I think 1,000 or 1,200 members of the press were there. Imagine all those people seeing your game. Just, go into the, just going into the press room with this banner, check out my game, will give you access to all the big websites. Don't do this though, don't, no, I'm going to cut that out of the presentation, so that's just for you guys. I'm going to cut, cut, no. But you can meet the press there in a very casual way. Um, you can randomly bump into big time AAA developers. I did. I even bumped into celebrities. Uh, I stood rex right next to Rob Halford, and I didn't know who he was until I finished Brutal Legend and I realized he was the lead singer of Judas Priest. Free market research. You get to see everything that's hot or not, or at least have the venture capital to pay for a booth at E3, and for booth babes, and for goodies, and whatnot. You can watch the pros do it. You can watch the pros present their game, pitch the game, you can just go there and they will do it in front of you and you will learn from them how you should do it and if you think they're annoying bastards, then don't do it like they did. Incredible, incredible, incredible knowledge right there. And you know what the best part is? Game conventions like E3 are free for industry people, that includes you. So technically, you do not have to pay $500 which they charge people who are not game industry related. The only thing you have to do is find a ticket to LA, register, and find a place to stay. Not a lot of work if you want to be at the hottest game convention in the freaking world. I mean, come on. N unlimited network opportunities. Last year, Activision had a party. They invited 6,000 people. You could have been one of them to see Eminem, Rihanna, NERD, um, Alice in Chains, you name it. It was awesome. Well worth the plane ticket alone. And that was just this tiny bit of this E3 experience. Same goes for Gamescom. So, network your ass off when you're there. Uh, John Graham, I met him in, in, I think it was 2009. He was this bearded um, indie game developer, right, at a GameSpy party I got myself into with a friend, and he was showing me this game on his iPhone with, like, Ninja Rabbits, and I was like, yeah, cool, cool, here's my card, mail me. He didn't mail me, but one year later, he was speaking at the GDC, and Wolfire set up the Humble Indie Bundle one year after that, and they're one of the hottest indie game developers out there right now. He went to E3, and he, he posted a blog about it and I really liked his blog because it totally you know it's totally on the same wavelength that I would I would you know do or what I did when I went to these events he says while waiting in line just to get into E3 you may find yourself standing next to the principal engine programmer for the Halo team Da. anyone you see holding a fancy looking camera is probably affiliated with the major gaming news site so go say hello I stalked as many as possible <laughs> <laughs> any after parties you can find are networking bonus rounds. And trust me, there are many after parties. Olga's online too. So start preparing for GDC Europe and Gamescom now, please. It's going to be in like, what, like two, three months from now? And it's going to be amazing. And they have student badges for the GDC Europe, so that doesn't mean you have to pay a lot. And trust me, Cologne is a very cheap city and they have a hostel so all of you guys fill up one hostel and go or get your you know get your university su to support you with just a little bit of funding and stop drinking beer smoking cigarettes and buying games for a couple of months because <laughs> you have no excuse not to go 
no excuse whatsoever. And if you ever see one of your fellow students try to come up with an excuse, remember this talk and remind them to watch it. So in summary, do your research. It's all about reading and doing research. That's how I got here. I did my research and I'm sharing it with you. But there's much more research to be done. Especially if you have very specific goals for yourself. You know, if you're making a PC game or a console game or something like that, your approach might defer a little or you might have to go to different conferences. Make a list of goals for yourself and try to follow them. Uh, find your golden ticket. Volunteer, apply as press, talk, set up a booth, your university connection, or just plain pay for a student pass. Set up a posse. Make sure you have a posse to hang out with, to help you get through the conference dip and everything. Enjoy yourself. Make fun. Because people who see other people enjoy themselves are generally directly attracted to you. And that's not a pickup line. That is a mere general fact. If you're male, female, doesn't matter. If you are having fun, if you are laughing your ass off and you're in a group, people want to join your group. People are wondering, who are these guys? They are awesome and they're having fun and I'm not. I want to join them now. <laughs> Fight the conference did. Oh wait, get networking like a boss. You have enough reasons to meet whoever you want to meet. Just figure out who they are, where they come from, and go for it. Give them your card. Fight the conference dip. And most important of all, avoid becoming the socially awkward penguin. You have nothing to worry about. So here are some references and further reading. You will find them on your uh, handouts as well. And uh, don't worry, I will post all of these presentations on SlideShare. All the videos of the lectures are going to be on YouTube. And, uh, oh wait, here's some, yeah, here, you can contact me if you want. I'm here till Sunday. Um, thanks a lot.